Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Dr. Angela Zen. She's a former medical research scientist turned entrepreneur, and she's deeply passionate about bridging the gap between Eastern holistic health practices and modern wellness. Now, Angela was born in China and educated with a PhD in pathology and has multiple certificates in holistic nutrition. But she is so dedicated to really helping folks explore the healing powers of nature through the lens of traditional Chinese medicine. And of course, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know I am an acupuncturist and love to geek out on Chinese medicine and food that relates to Chinese medicine holistic practices. So Angela and I are gonna be talking about food, but we're also going to be talking a little bit about her beverages because she is the founder of Carviva Beverages Company where she crafts wellness drinks that have ancient wisdom of holistic herbs and and principles of Chinese medicine in them. It's it's really cool. So nevertheless, we talked so much and geeked out so much, I had to split this podcast into two podcasts. So this is part one, where Angela and I talk about integrating time-tested practices into our modern lifestyles so that we can lead ourselves towards a more natural and balanced way of living. And here's the idea, less pills, more herbs, and thinking about the temperature of your foods. All right, let's introduce you to Angela Zen. Hey, health junkies. I have Angela Zen on with me, and we're talking, we've been talking about a lot of fun stuff, and I'm excited for you guys to hear this podcast. So one of the big things that drew me to Angela was was the connection to the Chinese medicine and East Asian medicine and how it can really help us to connect with mother nature, help us to connect with each other and ourselves. So tell us a little bit about how Chinese medicine kind of became one of your passions to help you create the Carviva beverage company as well. Well, thank you, Jenny. I really appreciate this opportunity to share my insights, my knowledge, what I inherited, and what I learned through the Carriva journey with your uh, audience, your followers. Uh, so, so for me, traditional Chinese medicine, that's not just like uh, killing arts anymore. I think, you know, people sometimes question if there's any clinical study to back up mm-hmm. those holistic practice. Well, I will say years, those years of practice, right? passed on through generation and generation and fine tuned, refined from generation to generation. It's almost like empirical study. In certain sense, it's a very large scale clinical study. Of course, it's a very different definition compared to the modern days, how we define clinical study, different arms, those kind of stuff. However, for me, is basically getting the essence from traditional Chinese medicine is how we view the connection of our own body, our mind, our spirit, with our surroundings. Our surroundings, including several things. First is other people in your life that you have great, you know, deep connection with, association with, you just have friends or (laughs) (laughs) casually. And then with other living creatures, like can be your pets, just birds, you know, in your backyard, and then plants and nature. That kind of things, the modern medicine, it just, we, we, we don't talk about them. You know, we really focus on just human <laughs> body itself, right? And yeah. then we drill so deep into the molecular cell level, which I was doing for years. I was doing, uh, using cell biology, mo- molecular biology to study heart disease and cancer. Fascinating. And it's also, it's great. It's great knowledge. We need to understand that, you know. However, this connection, we should never forget. And what I try to do is get that spirit and infuse them. I will say that's the ba- actually the backbone of Carviva. And the reason I come up with Carviva Wellness Beverages, people say, oh, you know, you just, you just, why? You you mm-hmm. were a research scientist, you know, you, you just want to be like a shark tank person. I'm like, <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I, I feel bad, but I didn't even watch, I haven't watched one 
well, at the soap shark tank, I mean, he's like, okay, yeah. I, I, for me, I, I never imagined myself standing on the stage Ask, I mean, it just, I don't see myself doing that, but I love sharing the knowledge you can see. Well, for me, it's about, I have this knowledge that I inherited, not I invented, let's, let's put it clear. This is accumulated more than beyond thousands of years, right? Th throughout our humanity that I accumulate. And I was fortunate enough last to be able to understand those concepts, those theories or those practice through the lens of modern medical research. Because to me, it's like, there's no conflict. They are not head to head against each other. It's like the holistic is which is practice and the modern science is the only way we should trust because they're concrete clinical study publications. For me it is the things our ancestor, we don't even know how they figure them out. However, it makes perfect sense. You know, you start to understand, for example, Jenny, we were talking about kidney and heart, all those connections. Right. I mean, in the modern medicine, we view each organ as one matter, like one thing. Mm -hmm. Liver is liver, lung is lung. Versus um, in the traditional Chinese medicine, it's a system. I'm sure you know the kidney is beyond that kidney organ. Because in the old days, 2000 years ago, when they wrote that book, what is the data that kind of show, actually show the blood vessel in a kind of simple way? neurons and the chi channel how how did they know you wonder how did they know i mean they are this serious oh they actually got this knowledge from aliens or from <laughs> we don't know i mean yes yeah. that was what i said like, because they didn't have michael of course they didn't have microscope how, how would they know you know but anyway that's i would say i mean the only way they could know except they were taught by whatever we don't know um is through this really kind of fine observation to ourselves, how we feel, right? So that connection, kidney is not a kidney organ itself. It is, it is a system. It's hormone, how we balance, like for example, kidney is associated with fear. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know that. And yeah. heart, it is, it is an organ not just pumping blood, keep our blood flow going, but it's actually kind of, it can tell us lots of things like emotion connection with our heart and broken heart. Now these days, perfect example, using the modern medicine, there's actually evidence to suggest it is, there's a broken heart syndrome. It's not just, you know, so there's a clear evidence, emotion connection with that organ. So what I try to do is actually using Carbiva, should I say is more like a, information sharing system or education system, however you call it, it's really, I want to empower people to take back control of their own health. Mm -hmm. Because now these days, I feel like when I was in a hospital, you feel sad. People really relied on, they put their lives in, in that little jar of pills or hoping someone else with a surgical tool can save their life. Of course, all those modern medicine process, you know, procedures and treatments are life-saving. I'm not disputing that. However, I think if we know how to live our life with this appreciation, we are not just one single isolated uh, physical body. Our organ is not just one single isolated that little whatever mm -hmm. matter of bunch of cells <laughs> working together. I think we have a much better control of our own health, our destination. Um, that's what I try to do with Carviva. Of course, uh, people also ask me, why beverage? Why not food? I, I mean, I do home make my healthy snacks at home and I have lots of tasty, <laughs> yummy recipes. I, I went with the beverage because based on the traditional medicine, uh, Chinese medicine, we believe the liquid form is the most potent one. It gives you a really fast, uh, results in terms of therapeutic results. I'm sure you see people go to the traditional herbal shop, you get those, you know, few bags of different herbs putting together based on what you try to achieve your uh, traditional Chinese med medical doctor prescribe that. You go home, you boil them in a jar of water, and then you drink the soup, 
right? Um, and modern medicine, actually, you know, if you, I also worked in pharmaceutical industry for a few years, the liquid form is actually the, the you know, for example, IV fluid, sublingual uh, tablets, they work much faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think, again, you know, just like our ancient knowledge is somehow, you know, now these days we, we understand how through sophisticated testing, all those experiments, research, but our ancestors just, they figure that out through just years of practice. Anyway, so I went with the beverage form. Actually, my first uh, product was detox. It's with mung bean sprouts and aronia berry. So mung beans in our culture, and also in, for example, Korea and Japan, is, is a very <laughs> special, has a very special place. Well, similar to like few many years ago, remember Americans were crazy about garlic. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> everyone want to eat garlic every day yeah. to be healthy and live forever. And then it becomes turmeric. Now I don't even know what becomes what. <laughs> we always try to find that one single, right. it's almost like this isolated one single superfood can save, save the world. In yes. reality, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Anyway, so, but, but mung bean basically in our traditional um, culture is not just a food. It has medicinal use. So what we use it for is, for example, in summer, it's really popular to drink uh, mung bean, mung bean like congee or soup. So you cook the mung beans in water and then you, you kind of just, you know, eat the whole thing, drink the water and eat the, eat the kind of the beans. Uh, and it will actually cool your body down. So go back to the heart, uh, because in summer, <laughs> mm -hmm. our heart yeah. can get over, over can get overheated. And and so mung bean is well known for treating heat shot, uh, digestive digestion discomfort. Uh, for small children, we even use it for treat fever. You know, cause you know just maybe a uh, flu or cold, and. Uh, it's very cooling in nature, but you know the modern nutritional medicine just tells us it's packed with uh, fibers, protein, lots of minerals, vit natural vitamins, especially reaching this kind of the fiber, the prebiotic fiber that obviously the good bacteria is in our digestive tract. It's, it's the, food. That the only food those good bacteria eat are the prebiotic fiber. So people have to remember that. And that's why the whole grain in the traditional Far East culture has a very special place. We would never put ourselves onto low carb diet. Uh, we don't like to eat refined diet, of course. Now it's all westernized. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. whole grain has a very special place because again, it's very nourishing. We call it, we have all those different tastes characteristic of different foods. So whole grain is sweet in nature, but many whole grains are naturally sugar-free, you know, believe it or not. Um, but is very nourishing in terms of uh, our, to our digestive system. So it cultivate digestive qi. And our belief, which makes a lot of sense, is the first treatment of your health is, should be your digestive system because you can spend thousands of dollars purchase the most healthy best organic food you can collect but if your digestive system is very weak very weak right what yeah. those food is going to do to you is basically becomes a burden yeah. so the first thing we do is really to make sure you have a strong digestive system and that's actually our connection with the outside too you know once we come out of my our mom's room <laughs> We need to use this digestive tract to process the gifts from Mother Nature turned into our energy, our vital chi, and then that allows us to have a life. When our digestive system stop working or stop working well, you start to have lots of issues, you know, so anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think a lot of people right now, you know, there's a lot of gut healing programs and things of that nature. But I do find that for a lot of people, they still struggle despite doing different detoxes, despite doing different protocols. And when I get to the bottom of it often ends up being like you're talking about the nature of the food, the hot and cold 
principles, same with the different flavors and, and the organ balances. Can you, can you speak a little bit more about how you have some of the Carviva drinks that work in the different angles for helping the gut? Cause you had, you mentioned your first one was for detox. What else, what other products do you have that can help for the digestive system? Yeah, that's such a great question. You know, the detox, like with mung beans, because mung beans, what, why I call it that detox drinks, mung bean sprouts with aronia berry as a detox drink. I think there are many detox regimen, like you mentioned in this country. Most of the detox to me, it makes no sense. They are too cold for mm -hmm. our body. Most of them, if you yeah. understand the traditional Chinese medicine, for female, our body is very yin in nature. It's actually not really good for us. For example, if you already feel like, when I was, I just, I have this body type. I have my hand and feet, usually a cold in nature. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But if, if, if I eat the right thing, if I do the right movements, they will be warm. So, but if I keep eating like raw food, you know, like cold salad, those kind of stuff, it will actually make it worse. And the detox juice in this country, they are just cold. Most of them are cold pressed juice and they use lots of veggies or very cold in nature, cold in nature, like celery. Celery is great for lower blood pressure, especially there's a, a classic remedy. We use celery cooked with um, scallop <laughs> or clam. Yum. That actually really, really lower if you do a soup, right? Uh, it really lower our, actually our uh, blood pressure. You know, if, you, if it is for people, if you travel uh, to another country and your medicine is running out, I mean, you can actually do that. It actually works. That's real clinical uh, study in the traditional Chinese medicine case by case to show how effective it is. However, it's very cooling. It is very cooling. So if your body type is already pretty cool, let's say, you know, if you're already vegan or plant-based, mainly eat less meat, the dairy product, we're already a little bit cold in nature and we're female, just we're and then you do this detox, it actually hurts your digestive system. So what I really focus on is why I use mung bean sprouts. Sprouts is in general, very good for us. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of vegetable sprouts because it condenses all the best nutrients from the seeds. Seeds is just basically imagine that in animal world kingdom, it's like an egg, right? Mm -hmm. And then it packs away nutrients because it needs to support this a new life. And mm -hmm. then the baby plants is packed with vitamins, minerals, fibers, all those goodies. And then most of the sprouts are naturally sugar-free. Like bean sprouts, you can eat a mm -hmm. whole bag of it. <laughs> you won't, probably won't gain any weight. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, uh, it contains two natural compounds. And they actually, just through this biophysical reaction, it actually chelates, binds the uh, heavy metals, especially the heavy metals in our body, which you know we have a lot. At least more than based on the CDC study, a hundred something, I guess even more than that, because we're just constantly exposed to all kinds of chemicals. We cannot avoid that, right? Uh, and then it is true. And then our body, our system basically get overwhelmed because it's a daily exposure, it's exposure, constant exposure. We cannot eliminate them effectively enough. So this, this natural compounds in the mung bean sprouts, uh, it actually chelates, it binds to this chemicals so what it happens it kind of helps our body to to flush them out so that's why i choose mung bean sprouts and aronia i pair that up with aronia berry so to kind of explain to you aronia yeah. berry is actually not native from uh east asia it's actually native with native plants in america so native indians use it as a medicinal food so they use it as a food and also use it for trade all kinds of disease and if you search go to the uh, PubMed or, you know, search the medical publications on a runner barrier, you'll be amazed. It, it's almost like, wow, why we, you put, you could prescribe that to your patients. Doesn't matter. They have diabetes or hypertension, hyperlipids, or even cancer. It's such a wonderful berry. It, it, the only reason, uh, you know, the industry love blueberry instead of aronia berry because this wild aronia berry is very uh, astringent taste, very sour, is very small. It's almost like a tiny, well blueberry. Birds love it. And it's a, it's naturally, it grows like a wheat. So you don't need to spray pesticides. You don't need to use fertilizer. It just grows wonderfully. So it's naturally very sustainable uh, plants. However, like I live in St. Louis, so the Midwest mm -hmm. farmers don't like it because it, 
kind of takes over their cornfields, soybean fields. <laughs> yes. So Raja had, it is true, Raja had to hire people to remove those. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't sell this berry. I don't know how to cook it. And I can't eat it because it doesn't taste good at all. It is not sweet enough, right? So, but birds like them. That tells you something, right? Anyway, so, but I use it because it's packed with antioxidants. And they are actually a professor in University of Wisconsin, Madison. He, his whole lab studies why a runner berry works. And he can tell you pinpoint to which compounds, you know, works. I mean, it's just amazing, amazing berry. So I combine a runner berry with mom bean sprouts. And then you can understand why they detox you. They don't make you to go to the bathroom because when you get this cold shot of your digestive system by drinking too much like cold veggie juice, guess what? You're going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> that is not detoxing. That's actually, if you go to the bathroom, it's almost like if you have diarrhea, right? <laughs> you start to feel really weak. Your energy levels start to be depleted. What we want to do is you, you still, you know, go to the bathroom regularly, right? It's not like make you to go more frequently. However, your body helps your body to el eliminate the toxins, the accumulate toxins from your body. At the same time, because it's also packed with nutrients, you have to remember that it's not just deplete the bad thing, remove the bad thing. You also have to add the good thing. This country, we're never short of food. I mean, most for most people compared mm -hmm. to other sort of con uh, sort of de developing countries. However, we're short of nutrients. I mean, we 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 are not short of calories, but we are short of you know nutrients. You you understand what I'm saying? It's like oh, yeah. you can eat a bag of potato chips, but that's very different than eating a nutrient dense, to, um, like a rice ball with you know well combined vegetables with a little bit meat or whatever you enjoy. So you want at the same time you remove the toxins. You also want to put something that's nourishing, that's cultivating your chi, your energy level. So that's what I try to stick with. So if you go to, for example, like we recently just launched at Walmart uh, Marketplace, we have this six day cleanser. I mean, my team come up with this 60, six day <laughs> cleanser, even though that was not really my idea, I guess just a popular term, but my, my is like, okay, well, I come up with this regimen. You need to drink, ideally I drink detox every morning. My kids also drink detox because of prevent cold and flu, but, is you kind of, you want this, you know, gentle elimination of your toxins, but you also want something nourishing, hydrating. So basically it's like you follow this regimen, you de you remove the toxins and then you nourish and stimulate your natural energy level and then stimulate, you know, boost your natural immunity. Um, That's the regimen I go with, not just let you, go to the bathroom more often for six days. <laughs> That's not right. If you do yeah. that, I would say we need to give you some herbal medicine to reverse that. <laughs> replenish replenish i mean that that is the thing and that's why people will do detoxes and then they go right back to eating a whole bunch of food because they've they're hungry now they have to yeah, they're yeah. triggered yeah. yeah you need to you need to do this nice thing remove the junk and put in a good thing right then mm -hmm. your body won't feel hungry all the times that's how actually you shape weight, you know, unnecessary, like fast, you know, you, you want to preserve your muscle, right? You don't want to lose your muscle at the same time. You don't want to keep those adding more toxins there because, you know, people then do uh, a lot of like uh, protein powder, whey powder. I'll just say, be careful. I'm not saying you should not do it. For many people, if you work out a lot, you do lots of weight training for Older people and you know myself, menopause stage, with you know for women we start to lose muscle mass in the early thirties, even late twenties, depends on your activity level. Yeah, you do want to pay attention to your protein intake. You don't want to over consume protein. Everything is a balance. However, then people start to use a lot of protein powder. I would say be careful because I'm in this food industry. I I do pay attention to the quality of the supplier. And unfortunately, many of the protein powder suppliers, their protein powder just very dirty because it is a process. They have to use many chemicals to extract the protein from that natural resource, which is very different than your cooking process. <laughs> you don't add 10 different chemicals 
oh, I'm cooking a chicken. I'm cook adding this chemical, that chemical. You don't do that. No, no. <laughs> so no, it's I agree. It's it's funny. It, it's it's a little funny to me to think, well, OK, we're going to add, you know, this to the diet, but we're trying to get healthier. But yet it has so many chemicals to extract it. it it's a little funny. Now, you mentioned and I saw on your website, the Carvivo website, that there was specific drinks for menopause and it looked like there was some electrolytes. Is that what I was seeing? Kind of a replenishment kind of thing? Yeah, the hydration I mean, yeah. we call it the recovery drink. So it's with natural collagen, antioxidants, and electrolytes. So again, the concept is, you know, may maybe, you know, I just have so much knowledge I love to share. And I try to put them, squeeze every my knowledge <laughs> into one bottle, which is hard to do. But <laughs> again, I don't, I don't like just, oh, let's just give athletes electrolytes only. You know, in that case, just hook them up with IV line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the best way you, know, you 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 hydrate right away but anyway for me is for 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 us most times we're not in the training field working really hard sweat like crazy five six hours a day we do a little bit of workout you walk around you know our activity is you know maybe low level to moderate as long as you remain that movement constantly you're actually going to be really healthy you're not going to be for athletes, their, their problem is injury and wearing out is a, is a different issue. Um, for us, is this natural hydration using natural electrolytes? So the electrolytes I use is really simple. It's minerals from black sesame seed. Oh, <laughs> lots of seeds. Actually, if you really look into the seeds, especially you know Chinese medicine believes this magical black color. <laughs> I'm sure you're here. Mm -hmm. Black soybean, black sesame, black rice. All those things has a magic healing power, right? Yes. There's nothing magical. It's just basically those black color means those pigments. They are actually a, a group of very strong natural antioxidants, <laughs> which our body really needs to repair the DNA damage. It happens every day. It just naturally happens. That's why, you know, when they're out of control, tumors start to grow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so this... This black sesame seeds are very naturally enriched in minerals. And one thing about, you know, women, calcium is a big thing. You know, we were kind of uh, menopause, pre-menopause, we start to lose calcium. Just it's, it's a natural thing, especially when our oxygen level kind of punch. You know, we don't have that anymore. The calcium, the bone density becomes a huge problem. But I would say one thing is, if, if you don't want to drink, again, if you cannot drink my drink, if you don't want to drink my drink, go get, buy those black sesame seeds, right? Uh, I like to, I have a homemade snack. I use black sesame uh, uh, paste and mix it with Chinese yam. And the, uh, the sometimes I use honey, sometimes I use dates, you know, and I've sometimes put shisenna berries, which is in my unwind drink. And then uh, it's actually then I compact them into like little like energy little energy bars. If you just I calculate if you just I just do two little squares like yummy candies gives you tons of energy. All my friends love it. You all have enough calcium for your day. You don't need to take any calcium. I don't take any calcium pills, uh, but you know at the same time you want to keep moving i don't go to gyms anymore i just take a walk whenever that's my way to connect with nature <laughs> no. in the gym i just i just i don't know i just i mean it is great uh but if you if you if you can do it but on the other side i really miss the fresh air and sunlight <laughs> yeah there's i mean there's no workout like the outdoor workout that is yeah hands exactly. down whatever now, we you want to do. Now you said the do you have the recipe for your little snacks online? Cause I'm I'm thinking about those. I'm like, oh, those sound amazing. Almost like like the old sesame bites we used to have um as kids that I don't see them anymore. Or like hova from from like the Middle Eastern culture, like the yeah. sesame paste. That oh, those sound really I, good. That's such a great idea. I could do that. Actually, it's really easy to make. I mean, the only thing is people probably don't uh, but you know, you can get a little blender or something, you know, in in, China, in in the Asian country like Taiwan, we we kind of like to use the old fashioned stone grounder yeah. to ground the sesame. The thing about sesame seeds or chia seeds or flaxseed seeds, 
they are so good for women women's health because especially I love black CC so much because it has this plant based estrogen the phytoestrogen which is so beneficial like I in one of my drink I also use black ses a uh, black soybean again um this phytoestrogen really helps our regulates our natural hormone system. So, uh, but one thing you have to remember, if you're eating those tiny little seeds, because it's hard to chew them into, right? I mean, they, yeah. they, they're so tiny. And if you cannot chew them well, your body cannot digest them well. So you're like the bird just basically pooping yeah. them. <laughs> right through you. I I've seen it. You, you can't, you can't, your body cannot take the nutrients out of it. So you can use a grinder, like a coffee grinder or something, which I tried and it works. Um, they, and then you ground it into fine powder, then you can do all those uh, mixing. And same thing with black seeds. Don't don't uh, buy the well the grounded uh, flax seeds. And um, you can try to have one teaspoon or teaspoon, two teaspoons a day. It really regulates our natural hormone system. Really, really beneficial. Not just only for women, for men as well, because mm -hmm. it's very rich in all those good oil omega uh omega three omega it has seven and i have to think whether it has eight it just has different omegas there mm -hmm. and also has both soluble and insoluble fiber mm -hmm. which is you know again so important for our heart health digestive health everything and has phytoestrogen and has a good amount of protein too People kind of forget about that. <laughs> it's not the protein doesn't just only come from chicken breast or turkey or beef. <laughs> so yeah. that's a good source of uh, protein, fiber, and all the goodies, minerals. And then uh, lots of seeds are very rich in minerals because, again, because they have to support a new life. Tiny yeah. little seeds will grow into a big plants. Imagine that. And a lot of uh, like alpha alpha is very rich in minerals too. So lots of plants, if their root system are very kind of go really deep in underground, they also have a tendency to kind of accumulate lots of minerals naturally in their fruits, in their seeds, or in their leaves. So wow, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I'm talking it's... too much now. No, no, no. It's, you know, it's very interesting to think about it. I think a lot of us don't stop to think about, oh, a seed's going to be a plant, right? You know, we we just think seeds, food, right? We don't, we don't think about like what's packed in there to be able to create a whole plant. And then we don't think about with leaves, you know, that there's vitamin A and C, you know, and all those chlorophyll yeah. because of what the, the plant does. So it's, it's, it's nice to have the reminder of what the plant's doing, especially the root too, because it's taking in so many yes. different things. One thing uh, we have to remember, if if we believe the evolution thing is right, I mean, people still debate on that. Well, you know, obviously I think the plants uh, are on this planet much earlier than animals. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they kind of learn how to survive even the very harsh uh, climate environments. Like I love quinoa. I use it in our wellness smoothie. Quinoa, the ideal place climate is very high altitude up on the high mountain, South America, like Bolivia. I love their quinoa. Again, very rich in minerals. And then they are naturally, it's a very sustainable uh, uh, crop. So for example, I don't know whether you can grow it on Mars. Maybe we should let Elon Musk to try, but but it's almost like, you know, let's just say if, if we have to escape this planet, gosh, if we kind mm -hmm. of this we cannot live here anymore, right? You go to another planet. I would say if we have to me like if I can grow quinoa, black black soybean, <laughs> either and any of the seeds, then we can survive. We'll be fine. We we'll, we can we can restart the culture or whatever civilization, <laughs> <laughs> and and then those plants actually naturally resistant to many things. Wow, oh, they they kind of learn how to you know work with harsh climate. Sometimes you see plants coming out of nowhere in the middle of the concrete. <laughs> it's like what? 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I, you know, I just had this conversation with my husband yesterday. He said, you know, it's funny how we see things as weeds, you know, like they're runaberry, like dandelions and think mm -hmm. like we have to kill them. We have to get rid of them. But in essence, they all have seem to have a medicinal property. I have noticed. I'm, noticed. I'm glad you mentioned about dandelions. Dandelion is, again, go back to the thermal nature of foods uh, in the traditional Chinese medicine, right? Dandelion is cold in nature. However, let's say if we have inflammation in our body, uh, we have a traditional remedy, like uh, during the spring season, if you get infections, especially around the respiratory system, around your nose, those air throw, we can use dandelion, just kind of boil it and drink the soup, or you can cook it as a vegetable. So any vegetable with bitter taste, most of the vegetables, herbs with bitter taste, they are cooling in nature. Mm -hmm. And yeah. actually that's also makes sense in the uh, modern medicine. For example, uh, Antibodies. <laughs> yeah. we, we should not overuse it for sure, but it's very bitter taste. Vitamin C also had that bitter, sour taste. That bitter taste means vitamin C actually is cooling in, is a cooling thermal nature kind of. So if, if you drink too much vitamin C, like I amount every day, it, it can deplete your young energy in a certain way. So just Remember, everything is a balance. You don't want to overdo it. It's not just, oh gosh, turmeric is great. Turmeric yeah. is very hot in nature. So for certain people, if you consume, take turmeric products every day, it may not be necessarily good for you. So just remember that. Same thing with avocado. People love avocado. Avocado is very yin in nature. So depends on your body type. It's not good for everyone. Kiwi is the same thing. Kiwi is very yin in nature. So in my drink, I try to balance that thermal nature too. It's not like only just bunch of things, heat up your body or totally cool down your body. Because I think most people, we need that fine balance. We don't need the extreme. That's an important statement right there. Because there are a lot of companies right now who are creating elixirs. You know, and a lot of like the drinks now, the adaptogenic drinks and things of that nature, where there are multiple hot, like ginger, turmeric, added cayenne, all in the same drink. And, you know, my girlfriend and I, she's she lives in, in L.A. And every time I go to visit her, you know, we'll go out and we'll look at the store and see what's new and whatever. And like, we'll look at stuff and be like, that is going to cause like such uh, an abundance of anxiety in me if I drink that. Like, I don't even need caffeine. I've, I'm have i fiery enough. I get that in me and I'm going to be like Ooh, exploding. And so this is why I was really drawn to, to your products because I'm like, you get the balance in things. And especially so for- important. Yeah. 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 Like that hydration you said about uh, well, menopause. You know, my kids also like it because they like the taste and they start to pay attention to the- nutritional table they are at the age my son is 14 my my daughter is a junior so she is uh 17 already so they don't like sugary stuff um and i don't use i don't i never even at home i don't cook with sugar if i need some sweetness i, I add a little bit of my juice <laughs> <laughs> sauce or i can put in you know like natural fruits like i i kind of use those fruits people kind of well, just toss them away. I saved them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so for me, it's a balance. So that A's drink, the A means natural antioxidants from sea bottom berries. So sea bottom berries from like the Tibet Himalaya region. Mm -hmm. So again, they grow high up on the mountain. They are this beautiful uh, yellow, orange color, little fruits, very sour in nature, packed with good oil i would say good fats and so that's and the orange color like carrots is vitamin a and rich in vitamin c and you probably sometimes see that in skincare product is believe mm -hmm. really good for your skin that's because of the natural and uh, vitamin a and c there and also the good fats um but for me it's a balance of 
electrolytes with natural antioxidants, then the C is the natural collagen from um, salmon cartridge. It's such a traditional dish in Japan. Uh, they marinate the cartridge is from salmon hat. It's, it's like supposed to be a food waste, but instead of threw that away, they save that and they marinate that in uh, rice vinegar and it becomes a super healthy, crunchy, tasty food. <laughs> so like a side dish. Huh. <laughs> and then and the scientists actually find people who consume those dish every day regularly, even when they're at their like 60s or whatsoever, their joints are still very healthy. So, so they start to study what's in this thing make them, you know, so strong in terms of their skeleton system is so good. And what they learned is this complex of collagen with a glycoprotein, this complex is, is just, it goes actually into our joint structure underneath our skin. So actually, I don't know, you, you know that the collagen becomes really popular in this country just yes. starting a few years ago. It actually started in Japan. Japanese started to use collagen product even back in the seventies, I cannot remember. Yeah. Really? If you go to Japan, the supermarket is filled with collagen product. But then the you know the the Americans got that idea. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, 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 I don't want to say people like copycat. I mean it's copycat, it is good. I mean, in a certain way, it's like people in this country start to like sushi, Japanese food, Korean food. You know, sometimes they Americanize it too much. That's the thing. I like. uh, but you know, uh, yeah, collagen is important for us, but you can get it from natural food too. And and I think you know definitely Americanized because most Americans are going to think okay like collagen soup with the 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 salmon interesting you know but people are making bone broth soups you know and so I think it's just if someone is used to having seafood and liking seafood you know as folks in the Midwest um it's funny you're mentioning you're in you're in St Louis a lot of folks in in the Midwest will be like ooh I don't know about a salmon soup you know chowder sure. <laughs> <laughs> but the salmon soup, I don't know. But like you go to go to Seattle where where I practice, you know, in the Tacoma area, a lot of folks are like, love it all over it. So I think it, you know, it's a kind of depends. Now, collagen, of course, yes, I would agree it's kind of trendy. What about the longevity brain health side of things? Because I, I recently watched one of your videos on Instagram where you're talking about brain health and you were pouring in the juice you had into a wine glass. Yeah, and I'm I love that. Tell tell us about that one. So what happened is, uh, well, I kind of aging process, which is a fun process. We all know. <laughs> I used to enjoy wine, you know, sometimes cocktail, and then I, I discovered, well, I age, my stomach just cannot tolerate alcohol anymore. I can drink a uh, half glass, and then it would upset my stomach right away. In addition to the hangover next day. So, so I stopped drinking wine and whenever I go to a social event, I was like, oh, sparkling water, cranberry juice, you know, what else? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the mocktail. Most of them are filled with sugar and who knows what kind of color they use. Anyway, so, um, so I thought, well, why not come up with a remedy? Because I, out of all my remedy connection, there happened to be a few of them. Actually, one of them in particular tastes and looks just like a dark red wine. And the, the, the good thing, the interesting thing is this remedy was developed to use to, 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 to kind of reverse the brain liver damage, you know, uh, in certain way caused by alcohol consumption over time. We do have lots of remedies developed for, for all kinds of health reasons, you know, just right. whatever there's a health problem, we have a remedy for you. <laughs> it is. It's true. It's, it's true. amazing. It is amazing. So uh, so basically it was like, why not just tweak that so I can make it almost like mimic like a wine. So it's like a wine replacement juice, but it's a remedy. It's not just a juice. So I use, for example, I, I love Arona Berry, you already know, I use Melberry. Melberry, again, super healthy berry. We just can't get a fresh berry, but they're super tasty too. Yeah, I Have like you ever those. tried a fresh Melberry? It's super tasty. I've I never mean, had a fresh. better than blackberry. Oh, I've never had a fresh. I've only had the dried 
in like different forms and mixes like I see. you know yeah no yeah when, when I was a little I I used to collect uh because I used to uh, raise my own silk worms <laughs> fun and they only uh they only eat mulberry leaves so I have to climb up the mulberry tree <laughs> And then the mulberries are the special treats. Oh, they are just so tasty. And oh. I, our neighbor actually has a big tree. And, and sometimes actually now that you, you can start to see them full of mulberry on the ground, I would pick them up. My husband think I'm crazy. Are you sure that you can eat those? I'm like, that's a mulberry. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to die from I'm like, no. He's like standing so, very close watching you. I know. I know. So. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sorry, it's kind of noise outside right now. Uh, but the the mulberry, Shishandra berry, I use that and I blend it with, um, you will think I'm, I'm crazy, a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Don't ask me why I think of them. I just try to come out with a diff, you know, different flavor profile without compromise the health benefits. It took me a while. So I come up with this unwind. So it's kind of soothing, kind of... Uh, it, I would say deep, very, very deep detoxing because all the super berries inside. Uh, I'm hoping basically is for people who kind of love wine too much or liquor too much, kind of help them to reverse some of the damage <laughs> that just yeah. accumulate over years. And it's it's coming. Is I would say you know sometimes if I feel a little bit too stressed out, I will pour a glass and it will come calm me down and it pairs really well with like for example if you enjoy cheese with cracker with cheese pairs that really well even with seafoods i mean yeah i i do drink it regularly so <laughs> Nice. It looked it looked wonderful. You know one of the things that i've noticed with Shisandra berry is it's very spicy. And so i was curious like what what did you do to to counter that? Do you have like how are you how are you sweetening you know, because obviously when people think of juices, they're thinking of something slightly sweet. What is your what is your sweetener of choice that you're using in in your products? Yeah, for unwind, I don't use any sweetener. So it's all oh. the, it, it tastes a little bit astringent. So if you taste okay, like that, wine. it's almost like wine. I got to send you some sample. You, you try and <laughs> let me know. Uh, and it has this wine taste. So it's not like too sweet. Maybe it's like semi-sweet type of wines, like Malbec uh, type of wine. Okay. But for my other juices, I do use monk fruits. Monk fruits, I use them not because trendy, not because trendy now in this country, like stevia used to be. I use it because it is a natural uh, herbal ingredient. We use it for treating many, many respiratory issues. It is very popular for people who use their voice a lot. Oh. You know, if you talk a lot or you're a singer or performer, it's really popular. They would, uh, we have those little healthy candies we make with herbs and monk fruits, kind of good for your respiratory system. Oh, that's good yeah, to and, know. And, and they, yeah, and their study to show the couple of compounds inside again. People, when they think about natural antioxidants, then they start to think about by C, vitamin A, vitamin A, A, E, those kind of stuff. But it's it's lots of natural, you know, the colors we see in the fruits, in the vegetables, mm -hmm. in the herbs. They actually are natural antioxidants. And people don't understand. They're, they're different structure-wise. They're totally different compounds. However, they all do really good things in our body. So the monk fruits contains these natural compounds. I think different studies show they are very, they have very strong anti-inflammatory properties and also uh, anti-cancer, you know, most natural antioxidants can be anti-cancer. And the reason is they kind of help our body to repair the damage, you know, like DNA damage, which is constantly it happened. It happens all the time, so we're just not aware of it. Those compounds helps us to to huh. repair those damages. I never knew that much about monk fruit. I kind yeah. of honestly thought it was trendy, like you know the rest of the the stevias and things. But I did know that it's not like when you take the monk fruit, it's not as refined, correct? When you add it into products, it's not as refined as say the stevia to make it from a green. Like the stevia, I mean. 
I, I don't have anything against stevia, but I think most of the stevia supply on the market, they have they overcooked, over processed. Mm -hmm. So they have this aftertaste. People yeah. call it a, a bitter aftertaste. I don't know whether that's the bitter aftertaste is from processing or from the processing chemical they use. I don't know. Because if you taste the natural stevia leaves, yeah. they don't have that taste. No, no, it's different. It's different. Yeah. So, mm. so the monk fruits, actually, I have those dried monk fruits. If you're curious, I can send you a couple. Yeah. Them, they just, they're very sweet. They are 200 times, uh, more than 200 times sweeter than cane sugar. Um, and, but we use it to cook, like, if you want to do a sweet, like a dessert congee, you can do that. Well, Angela and I had a great conversation and we just kept chatting about Chinese medicine and the energetics of food and different ingredients that she has in her Carviva beverage products. So we had to divide this podcast up into two. So the rest of this one is going to be following. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Hey, Health Junkies, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.